Red Agent asks, I'm trying to create a simple button that almost looks like an arcade button when viewed from the top. I don't need the outside part of the button, just the inside. All right, let's look how we can draw a concave button in Inkscape. And here is the example that the Red Agent linked to. I've embedded it into an Inkscape file, and we're going to start building it from just the circle tool. That's all we're going to need here. I can even make it the same size here. Now I'm going to copy using Control C, and you can paste in place using Control Alt V. This will create a copy, and it'll place it exactly over the original. I'm going to shrink it down here using Control Shift and the corner arrow of our shape. To this will serve to get the highlights here. Another copy will get the highlight at the bottom and it will serve as a shadow at the same time for the top half here. All right. I can even do a fancy cut in of the shadow like so. This will be hard to see because I'm doing the the red line on a red shape is really hard to see in this case. Okay. So I'm just hand carving out a general shape for where the light hits at the bottom. Okay, here we go. And we're going to be able to cut that out of a copy of our shadow. So I'm going to copy the shadow. Take this and put it, hit home to have, make sure it's hovering over the top, and then hit control minus, and that'll give us our shadow over here later on. All right, let's color these pieces. Now, since the red agent did not need the outside portion of the button, we won't be doing it for this tutorial, and you'll see principles just in the center of the button that you can use and, and apply to the outside of here. All right, so let's start by giving this a base red color and uh, giving it just a little bit of lighter stroke at the top. Hold on, set the color at the same red, but I'll edit the properties of the stroke paint and uh, give it a linear gradient, maybe even try radial, and uh, edit the linear gradient, giving our first color a little more, a little paler and a little less saturated here. Okay, maybe even more paler to get the light bouncing off there. Okay. And the next stop by default is um, the alpha is at zero. That means it's transparent, so I'm going to make it opaque. But I'm going to make it a shadow instead. So I'm going to make it darker, but keep it saturated over here. All right. And that's a bit too dark. Well, maybe something like this. OK, here we go. All right, so let's align our linear our gradient, radial gradient, put the center of it at the top here where the light is going to reflect and stretch it out like so. All right, so we got our the outside of our button this way. N next we're going to do the highlight over here. So let's give it just straight white light or just red almost white. Here we go and hit radial and we're not going to edit it this time because we only need one here now since we can't have more than one radial on the same on the same uh, shape here on the same stroke shape or a stroke of the shape we'll copy and paste it and then rotate it to get our other light source and we can hit F2 and 
change it, make it a little brighter than the other one, or a little less bright. Just give it some variation. And then we're going to have the other one down here. Oh, hold on here. Okay, this is going to serve as the shadow. Might as well do our shadow right now. Take a darker red, remove this, and we'll just go over here and remove the stroke. And uh, let's blur this in here. Three, four, five levels of blurring. And we can even give a little bit of transparency so it's not all too dark. And we can even give it a radial Not on the stroke, of course. Hold on. On the fill. Give it. Here we go. It's a little more subtle. Like so. And this will serve as the highlight. So we can get white. We can use the same color here. Hold on, this is not the right. Okay. Hold on here. Okay, we'll just send it to the back. I'm going to hit the end button and page up until it appears again. This just uh, sends it back so I won't click it by accident. And then I can concentrate on this one here. Do the same thing, except I'm going to reuse the same gradient as we have on the top one. And hit F2 to see our nodes for the gradient and adjust it so it fits with what we have in the picture. There we go. And we can do little subtle details like the little reflection here. Now the line is red on top of red, so you won't be seeing me while I'm drawing it. Just have to imagine it until we can see it. All right, so I'll hit three, zoom in on it, zoom back a little bit, and edit it with F2 just to get the right shape. This feels right. Okay. Then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to give it a color, get rid of the stroke, and blur it just a little bit. And give it transparency, like so. And we can group the object. And that's how you do the center of an arcade button. I hope this tutorial has been useful to you, and I thank you for watching.